I'm not like my dad. I'm smarter than him. Better than him. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modai J and we are locked in. This is the recap for Power Book 2 Ghost Episode 4. Now this week, very good episode. We know that that Rico team, they putting things together, aka the Justice League. And guess what? Noma hasn't popped back up. Obi's still in charge. And this week, he's bringing guns for the next re-up because the crew said that they can replace Mecca. So we're going to see if they really can or not. But before we jump into this and break down and give the recap of Power Book 2, episode four if you like power content breakdowns recaps theories and predictions live after show discussions tune in tonight 9 p.m eastern then hit your subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload make sure you hit that like button and follow me on instagram right here now the crew they have a huge task ahead of them they gotta reach that million dollar goal and once they do that we gotta continue oh and spoiler alert Tariq gets a car this week <laughs> So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of episode four of Power Book 2, Ghost. The crew, they got no cap, all frap. It's running, it's jumping. Tariq, Brayden, Wall Street, making it happen. Effie, on the other hand, she's working at the warehouse. She's making sure the numbers are good. Tiny's down here messing up on the count, but she comes and corrects them. So right now, it looks like they really making that money. We all know the Tejada secret by now. They're going to see a memorial that Lorenzo put up for Monet because she's been down and out the last three episodes. Now, when she sees it, she's her. Hey, she's joyful. She's also a little bit sad. But Lorenzo is trying to smooth things over so she doesn't look more into the murder because he's the one that did it and Kane knows. Now, Diana does show up late. Monet gets a little upset about that. But also, Whitman shows up and he continues to harass, harass, harass. He wants to know who killed Carrie. He wants to know who killed Zeke. He's going to get to this one way or another. But after they tell him off, the whole family, they're deciding what's the next move. Now, Monet says they're going to have a family meeting and she doesn't let Diana come to it because Diana wanted to go to college. So if you wanted to go to college, stay away from the dope game. We're seeing the family power shift in the Tejada family. We don't know who's in charge. Is it Kane, Lorenzo, Monet? Well, they got a new product. The re-up is now guns. Monet is saying, we don't move guns. We're not going to do that. But Lorenzo's looking. He's saying, yeah, we kind of got to. So we're going to go ahead and do what Kane is telling us to do. Now you look over at Drew. Once they leave, he's upset because he knows that his father and Kane, they've been acting different. Lorenzo is doing everything that Kane tells him. And he's not even thinking twice about it. Jenny and Cooper, Sullivan and Sachs, their relationship depends on each other. Now we know the Rico, the Justice League. They need information. And Jenny's been using Sachs as her CI because he works with Davis. Now he does have a picture from Davis's office of Davis, Monet, and Tariq. So Jenny could use that as a connection for the Rico. But she keeps getting calls. She steps away to take a call from Blanca. But in her bag, another phone is ringing. Of course, Sachs, he takes a picture of it. And now he's asking Jenny, who are you messing with? Who, do, who keeps calling you? Who's hitting you up? Man, this man can't leave Jenny alone. Across town, we finally see Tariq's car. Now, they're saying Tariq got that Porsche 911 2015 GT3. They looking at it like, okay, we see you, Tariq. You done finally stepped up your game. Everyone's clown, Tariq. But now Tariq has a car none of us can afford. After last week's debacle, where Braden froze up and didn't kill the Russian, Kane pressed him a little bit and got some information and found out if Braden didn't kill the Russian, he might not have killed Lauren. So he's been hitting Lauren up and she ain't answering. Now, when he comes and talks to her about it, she's looking at him like, who told you this? He said, don't worry about it, but thank you for looking out for me. Maybe I should tell Tariq he got a real one on his arm, but she doesn't want to divulge this information to Tariq at the moment because she knows that Tariq was in love with Lauren. So she's telling him, look, Kane, I'll tell Tariq, just fall back. Well, guess what? Obi shows up and Obi is saying, hey, y'all said y'all were better than Mecca. You were going to replace Mecca. Here's your new re-up. It's guns. Now, Tariq is trying to explain to him, hey, we sent you the money already for the first re-up, but we don't do this gun. Our infrastructure is not built for guns. It's built for dope. But Obi don't want to hear none of that. He don't want to hear Braden talking. He don't want to hear Tariq talking. He wants to see all the guns move by the time he gets back or we know the consequences people are going to die. 
American Psyche, 9.05 a.m. America, the land of opportunity. Now, Professor Bennett wants a couple of the kids to come up front and we're gonna do us a little experiment. If you were raised with both of your parents, take one step forward. If one of your parents were in jail, take two steps back. After they got through going through a little examples of life challenges, you kind of looked at where everybody was at and you wondered, did they have a head start? Did some people start behind others? But this is America. Life. It isn't fair. Some of us do have head starts. Some of us start behind. But it's not where you start. It's where you finish. It's where you finish. Tariq is even looking at Effie and noticing that Effie's in the back and Tariq is up front. Maybe Tariq started up front because he has a trust. Maybe because one of his parents were the mastermind. Now we're not sure who the mastermind was, but the last I heard, Tasha St. Patrick was the mastermind. Now Tariq and Effie, they go outside and he finds out that her dream is to come on out here to California, go to Stanford, go ahead, get her PhD, do her thing in robotics. Now Tariq didn't think that was something that she would be interested in, but he's thinking, listen, if I can finish college here, get some money, everything turns out great. Maybe me and you, I can come out there to California with you. Now Effie, we know that for the most part, she's for herself. Now it seems like she does like Tariq, but it doesn't look like she wants to go to school with him anymore after this because she gotta save up $50,000 a semester. Tariq and Effie are talking about getting their PhD when Lorenzo shows up to Diana's room. Now she's gonna get a PhD. It's gonna be pushing that hard dope. PhD, pushing hard dope, pause. Lorenzo pops up with two more bricks. Diana says she doesn't want anything to do with it. Nothing else to do with it. But Lorenzo doesn't care because he needs help. And this is for the family. If you love the family, then you'll do this, Diana. You said you want in, then you're in. But Diana, she's not looking at it like that. She's on the college campus, it's hot. She has a little job. Just when you think Poppy bringing two bricks to campus is enough, Monet shows up. And now Monet, we know how she feels towards Diana. She's telling her, look, everything that happened, it happened. I'm sorry, I was grieving. But there's this detective on me, a white guy, Detective Whitman. I need you to go and talk to him, get him off our case. And Diana's saying, why would I get him off our case? Did you commit the crime? Monet says, does that matter? Just get him off my case, throw him off because you're a civilian. And even Davis told her, this is probably the best plan because Monet, he's gonna keep harassing you. Drew and Gordo, they're talking. Now, we know that these two are interested in each other and they're talking about being cousins, but it's play cousins, but Gordo doesn't mix business with pleasure. Well, Drew brings up the fact that they got guns, guns that need to be moved. Gordo knows some people. Now, there's some white people, so you gotta be careful out there, but they're willing to buy all the product. And this would be good for the crew because if they can sell all the guns at one time, then they don't have to worry about it. They can just get a gun money to Monet. I mean, not to Monet, but to Noma and continue on. But this is going to be risky. And Gordo even gives them a heads up. Tariq is an intern at Weston Holdens. Him and Lucas had a meeting with RSJ, Ron Samuel Jenkins, the richest black man that we've ever seen on TV. Now, he wants to invest with Weston Holdens, but he ends up leaving because Lucas, of course, drops the ball. So Tariq goes to get some advice from Tate to try to get some dirt, but there's no dirt on RSJ. He's legit. So Tate is telling him, you'll figure it out just for the simple fact that he's a billionaire talking to you, then you're in a good place. So Tariq needs to figure it out. And on top of that, Tate says, hey, I got a meeting with Blanca, so you need to make a donation to my campaign $5,000 a week in Bitcoin, or I'm going to go talk to her. Now, Tariq is saying, I ain't got that kind of money. But what meeting do you have with Blanca? He says, well, since you don't have the money, I don't have the information on that meeting right now. So Tariq is about to pay him $5,000 a week in Bitcoin. The Justice friends, they all come together. Sachs, Blanca, whatever beef they had in the past, we got to put it behind us because Jenny is trying to connect the dots and you two, we got to work together. Now, Sachs isn't really giving any information about Davis yet but he's given little bitty pieces. Hopefully the other member of the Justice League, Whitman, can come up with his part. But as of right now, we gotta work together. 
Lauren had just been sitting at Jenny's house, two cans of spam, no internet, nothing. And Jenny is saying, listen, you got to lay low. Effie might get you. Braden, Tariq, they're on that list too. She said, no, you know what? I'm tired of this. I can't do anything. But Jenny says, hey, look at these pictures real quick. Even though Lauren's upset, she still answers these questions. Look at Tariq and Effie. Look at these murderers. They're just living life like nothing ever happened. So now she's upset because she's stuck in the house a little bit salty because Effie is the one that did all of this. And now Effie is with Tariq. But she starts giving up information that her and Tariq went to the roof. Then seeing her cousin on the roof talking about Diana, Kane's cousin, Drew, yeah, Zeke, the Tejadas, all of them. She said, did you see all of them? No. Nah. Just Zeke's cousin, Diana. See, Jenny's trying to connect Kane into there, but Kane ain't on that. Just Diana. Now, Diana got two bricks, and we know that Jenny's about to try to put cameras on the roof. The plan is put in place. Diana goes to talk to Whitman. Now, Celine just mentioned to her, maybe you should separate yourself from the family. Worry about you moving forward. Now, when she gets out here, she starts telling all kinds of information. The bar ain't making no money. They cooking the books, money laundering. So Detective Whitman is saying, thanks. But why would you do this? Now, Diana is basically telling him the truth by saying, hey, I thought I was the cancer, but my mom is. I need to X her out. So Whitman is hearing this and thinking, OK, Diana, this is good information. But Diana says she's not welcome in the house. She can't get the book. So Detective Whitman is saying, hey, listen, I'll go in there and get the books. And right there, I was thinking, Whitman, what are you doing? Even if you go in there and steal the books, unless someone hands it to you, you can't use that as evidence because when they ask, how would you get the books? Oh, I had a break in the house, but he don't care because he's thirsty to put a Tejada behind bars and figure out who killed Carrie. It's time to sell those guns and we need to head on out. But before they leave, Braden Weston meets Lorenzo Tejada. Lorenzo don't want nothing to do with it. But Kane is saying, don't mess it up. He's good. Once Gordo and Drew show up, Kane is telling them, hey, you two fall back. We're just going to use Brayton because he's still trying to get at Brayton because Brayton now owes him two bodies. So he's going to use them as much as possible. Last week, it was to kill a Russian. Didn't do it. Last season, it was to get rid of Lauren. Didn't do it. Well, this season, you at least going to sell these guns for us. RSJ shows back up for a meeting at Weston Holden's. And the reason he's here is because Tariq had a little bit of time with him. Now, Lucas apologizes about everything and comparing him to Elon Musk. But he says, what am I really here for? And Tariq has a proposition. You remember the Queen Child Project, something that James St. Patrick envisioned way back when that never finished. Well, in the trust, he can give it if, if, the buyer buys it for more than the market price. So if RSJ buys the Queen Child's project from Tariq, Tariq will have more money for his trust when he graduates. And now RSJ is signed to Weston Holdens and Tariq is still an intern. So it worked out for everybody. It's a win-win. Braden arrives to the gun drop off. Now the hillbillies, they looking at him and they thinking, who are you and how do you know Gordo? Cause Gordo, he Latino. Who are you? Brayden's like, what does it matter? But as they're unloading the guns, this guy's like, I don't know who he is. I want a heads up. And he takes a picture of Brayden. Now, Jenny did say that Blanca told her that there's a CI that's going to be at this drug deal. So now there is a picture of Brayden. The exchange goes down. Brayden drops the money off. And after Brayden leaves, they come and kicking in doors and people get to shooting. Kane hit the ground. Lorenzo catches a body. Now we got to get out of here with the money because we are sitting ducks right now. I don't know why they wanted to count the money. They should have just dipped. But oh, well, that's neither here or there. We are in a shootout. Lorenzo ends up saving Kane during all of this. Drew and Gordo pull up. Pop, pop, pop. They finish off the last two. And man. We made it out of here. Everybody's good except for Gordo. He got grazed. But Lorenzo, he texts Drew and said, follow us up here just in case things went down because you always need backup. 
never travel solo. On the way out of there, they collect the money, they got the guns, so they can still sell the guns again and make even double the money, give Noma hers, and make some money on the side. Now Drew and Gordo, they went to go get patched up, and we seen that them two, they got to the kissing, so they getting closer, and now the bond between Lorenzo and Kane is getting closer because Lorenzo did save Kane. If not, Kane would have been shot, game over. Well, he's saying, Lorenzo, dad, your secret is safe with me. This money, let's get it together. And they build that bond. So moving forward, the Tejadas, we got a little bit of unity because Diana and Monet are getting closer. And now we got Lorenzo and Kane. Detective Whitman, he goes ahead with that plan to break into the house, go upstairs into the room and get the books for the bar. Well, when he breaks in, he doesn't know that Diana's in there because this was all a setup by Monet. Diana's in there. She sees Whitman. She calls the police. Hello, someone broke in. Monet comes around the corner with a gun. Whitman is saying, wait, wait, wait. I'm a cop. You can't do this. The only thing Monet tells him is tell that B Carrie. I said, what up? She goes ahead and shoots Whitman, takes him down. And then she tells Diana, punch her in the face a couple times so they can go ahead and get this self-defense charge. Man, oh man, Monet plays a dirty game. Tariq is telling Effie about everything that happened with RSJ and potentially getting more money to the trust coming out to California. Now, she's getting closer and closer to Tariq every episode. So she texts Kane and tells Kane, I can't tell Tariq, so I need you to keep your mouth shut. Basically, I don't want Tariq to know about this murder. I'll let him know when I feel like I think he's ready. Kane, he's been trying to get at Effie, so it ain't no telling how he's gonna move after this, but Effie is getting closer and closer to Tariq, and Kane, he's just trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to make another dollar. Blanca shows up to the scene of the shootout at the motel, and one of the guys survived. The guy Drew shot in the back, it just hit him in the spine. He's in critical condition. But if you remember, he took pictures of Braden. He took pictures of Lorenzo in the window. And it ain't no telling of what else he's seen while he was out there. So with Blanca on the scene, she said, I want to talk to him ASAP because it seems like he was the CI. So now we're in a lot of trouble. And you know, Blanca ain't about to give up. But we got the connecting pieces with Sax also to connect Tariq to a Tejada with Davis. So it's a whole mess right now. And the last thing we see is Monet going through the foul that Davis gave her. And it's a partial match of Lorenzo Tejada on the fingerprints. This is the same foul that Detective Whitman was on the phone making the call about. Now Lorenzo shows up. He's like, what's going on? She's like, oh, nothing. But she just told Davis, look into it. And why was Lorenzo's fingerprints anywhere near this crime scene? All right, there you go. The recap of episode four of Ghost. Let me know what you think. Is this murder going to come back to Lorenzo anytime soon? Or is he going to be able to skate up under the radar a couple of more episodes with the protection of Kane? And also, what are they going to do with this Whitman situation? It looks like there's a lot of eyes on the Tejadas and it just keeps getting hotter each and every week. But let me know what you think. Make sure you tune in tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do a full detail, in-depth coverage of each individual character talk about where they went wrong where they went right who was the mvp if you like this kind of content also hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new thanks for watching i'm out